We boys have three days off. We had boys away in Tesla duty and got some good work done on the training pitch. But obviously, you've got people like Andre and Linda and Ilias, Ozzy, etc. away. So uh, it's always a difficult time for every club, in. OK. Uh, I know you're, you're quite vocal a few weeks ago about Linda not going to play for Scotland if he wasn't fit enough. But he, he evidently is because he went away and played. Was that sort of with your wishes? or uh, you bit was, uh, people, need, people need to look at the details, Ian. He wasn't fit to play. He didn't go away with Scotland. Uh, until he had proved his fitness with, with QPR. So he stayed, he trained on the Sunday, he trained on the Tuesday and then the Wednesday and then travelled to Scotland after that. Hence, he missed their first game. But he was, we have to make sure that a player is fit and well. Um, and at that point, as I say, any country has the right to call him up. But our medical teams were in, in uh, consultation. We were happy with where Lyndon was. He worked hard in training and he went up there and I think he played 24 minutes and got some pitch time. Um, so everyone benefited from that. In, I mean, from your point of view, I guess that is good that he got some some minutes under his belt ahead of you know what is a really big game on Saturday. Yeah, it's important, you know. So as I say, he has to prove his fitness. Of course, he does. If he's not ready to go full stop, if he's out, if we know he's out for the duration of international break, he doesn't go anywhere. But it was it's one of those ones where he was he's getting near to fit, very near to fitness, working sports science. But he just had to go and prove himself to us. So he had two or three good sessions, hard sessions. And then travelled up there, Ian. So yeah, he got some minutes under his belt. He's come back. He trained very well on um, on yesterday, on Thursday, and again, hopefully this morning, and see how we leave it. Oh, obviously, the last the last game was you know bitterly disappointing, and you know there was a lot of you know sort of I guess anger in the crowd and that, which hasn't been seen it for a while. What was the kind of reaction of the players sort of post that match? What what was said, and is it kind of behind you now, or is it kind of a you know, a few harsh words exchanged? No, you have to exchange harsh words in. Is it behind? Yeah, of course, it's two weeks ago. You can't sit there and and, and mope and, and uh, whatever else about a game. The fact was we let ourselves down specifically in the, in the second half. It was an unacceptable performance and we have a responsibility. Um, we have a responsibility in terms of the, the supporters, in terms of the club, in terms of ourselves. We have those responsibilities. If we don't do it, there's consequences in. You know, we said to players, so they, they know, they know we've been, they've, they've worked tirelessly all season. We've been in the top six, I think, for 95% of, the, of this season. We dip outside of it. And as you say, the crowd pay their money and they're, they're absolutely within their rights to boo and everything else. We need the crowd more than ever before. That's what you need because this is a brutally demanding league. The boys have done exceptionally well and they, did, they deserve so much credit, but we let ourselves down. We had a tough February and March and we have got to recognise that's down to us. Uh, and we have to correct it now with eight games left in. But um, there's no doubt words were exchanged. There's no doubt some honest opinion was put forward. But it has to be in any organisation. If you have a bad run, bad day, bad week, you have to be honest and, and be quite forthright with your views. Is, is there a feeling as well amongst the squad that, you know, as you say, you've been in the top six all season pretty much. You just dropped outside of it and everyone's now writing you off. Is that almost like a... Yeah, there is very much so. I've, I said to you before, I've read some quite bizarre comments where... You know, they've been very, very derisory, very derogatory. And again, journalists have the right to write what they want to write in certain in certain situations. But from our point of view, we've been very good for vast, vast ways of the season. With no doubt, the February and March have been difficult for us, starting really at Barnsley away. You know, Millwall, we let ourselves down, kind of at home after being one up and comfortable. Those type of situations in, there's no getting away from that. We've dropped valuable points um, and it's been down to us. So it's it's a it's a case of let, let them write what they want to write. It's it's up to us to correct that uh, and deliver eight really good performances as what we need for the uh, remainder of this season. How big sort of around this week have been the likes of sort of Stefan and Charlie, you know, your, your Albert, your senior players, about just kind of galvanising the players and sort of you know, I know Charlie's been out on social media this week, sort of you know, saying you know, hang about, you know, we, we're a good side, don't write us off, sort of thing. Is it is that been sort yeah, of vocalised amongst the players? Again, the team is building in. The team is building, you know, so I think 13th and then come in ninth, and then we've been top six in the all season. I think it came out that we're 15th in budget terms. So the boys deserve a lot of credit for what they've done. They have been punching above their weight. Do we expect, do, do we expect to be punched above our weight? Yes, because we had a really strong 21 and finished last season into this first half of this season. We absolutely expect to be pushing hard. But there's no lack of respect or recognition of the, the level of teams and budgets that are in and around us. All credit to the likes of Luton and, and Huddersfield, etc. All credit to them. Um, we're doing exactly the same. But there's some big, big budgets around us as well. So all you can do is, is keep pushing on. And Charlie's point, I think, is very valid. 
come on, gents, we've had a really good season. Okay, we've let ourselves down. We need you now. Uh, and Charlie's very passionate. He's very vocal. So, yes, answer to your question, the likes of Charlie and Steph, the likes of Lee Wallace, because these guys have been there and done it in. You know, Steph's had two promotions. Charlie obviously has played top champ, got promoted into Premier League. Lee Wallace has played numerous old firm games, massive games with consequence and pressure. And you need to have their experience conveyed to the younger players in the squad. Right now, we've given ourselves a, an issue to deal with. The best way is to go and perform, go and play. Yeah, obviously, Fulham, you know, they're a very good side. They've scored lots of goals. They're top of the table. But, I mean, they have picked up only one point from their last two matches. Have you, I'm not going to expect you to, you know, give a game plan away, but have you have you sort of seen, you know, perhaps weaknesses where you can, you know, exploit? Just every team's got weaknesses. Every team's got strengths. There's no doubt about the quality in the Fulham ranks. There's no doubt about that, Ian. They, they, they're free scoring. They can attack with quality. They have, they have good depth, excellent depth in terms of options they have. They're players away and, and they can replace them with very high quality players. They're a very good team. Very well managed, not respect for Marco and the job he's done. Um, so I recognise that they're a very good team. But we, they also know we're a good team as well. Um, so we have to recognise their strengths, negate those strengths, and at the same, same time look to impose ourselves on, 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 a, on our pitch in front of a packed, in front of a packed stadium. And we have to show what we're about as well. We have to move the ball with pace and purpose. We have to pose some real problems, make them make a decision uh, all over the park. And if we do that, we know we're a good team. Um, but talk is cheap. It's about us delivering a good performance. I've no doubt about the quality of our players in, no doubt about their resolve to do well. And we have to go and show it tomorrow and Tuesday and next week at Preston and so on at the end of the season. Last, last season, you played Fulham in the Cup, but it's pretty much by one or two players, the same team that they're fielding at the moment in the Championship. And, you know, you lost an extra time, but really that was a game you, you could have put them away, sort of, you know, missed good chances of that. Does, do you look at that game and think that gives you some sort of, you know, blueprint almost that what you have to do to kind of hurt them? No, because teams, are, teams don't just sit there and, and allow you to do what you did last time. You know, so Marco will look at recent games and he'll look at what uh, they have to do better. And so will we. He's not going to look at QPR and say they're going to just do exactly the same thing again. We have to find solutions in. Every team has to find solutions. Whatever game it is tomorrow, they'll find ways, as I say, to negate the strengths and, and try and expose the weaknesses. And that's, that's what we have to do. So, um, no, we know we face a tough opponent. We know we face a sellout crowd. We've got to enjoy the situation. And that's the key for me with this team. When you have young players in, they've got to relish the challenge. They've got to relish the opportunity they have tomorrow in front of a packed stadium. Because we're right in and around it. We're right there. You know, people write us off, as you said earlier. Let them write us off. No problem at all. But it's up to us to show what we're about tomorrow. And I'm, I've got no doubt at all that players will do that. And uh, just a word on Kieran Westwood, finally. He's at, you know, it's a very odd situation for him. He's been jetted in, doesn't really know anyone, and kind of he's thrown straight into a match. How, how's he coped sort of, I think the last done. few weeks? I think he's done remarkably well. You know, he's, he's been trained all season, I think, with crew. Um, so he's kept himself very fit. But there's a big difference between being fit, physically fit and match sharpness. Um, but he has a fantastic CV. You know, look at his experience, player of the season for Sheffield Wednesday on two or three occasions. You don't get that as a goalkeeper, Ian, without being very, very good. Um, so there's no doubt about his quality. It works for everyone. He is, he is fighting for contract and puts himself in the shop window for next season. We're, we've had a remarkable situation of being four goalkeepers out long term um, and, and everyone wins by this arrangement. So he's, he's come in, he's been great. I've got no doubt that his experience, his quality will be showcased in the next seven or eight games. Uh, just quickly, on, on Senny as well. I mean, I know it's been about five, six weeks ago since he picked up that injury at Blackburn. Is, is there any, I think they, they said there was sort of like a month you'd, you'd know better when he could return. Is there any sort of, he's, you know, you know he's, he's, been, he's in the... Jim doing his boxing. The big thing when you have a quad injury is on the strike in the ball. So, we got, again, stating the obvious, but we've got to see how that progresses. That's going to be the, the acid test, so to speak. But, um, no, he's working hard every day, Ian, but he's, he's not ready just yet. I mean, would that be kind of, he has to pr prove it and kick a ball before he can be sort of well, yes, but, you know, you can't, you can't have a situation when the ball comes yeah. back to you and you go, sorry, course, I can't yeah. kick that one. So, yeah. we have to make sure. And there's no way you're kicking through knowing you're going to rip your quad. Um, so, uh, as I say, he's working hard in the gym. Medical team is doing some great work with him. And once we know, we know.
Are you hopeful he might come back this season, though? Once, once we know, we know. Simple as that. Yeah. We don't know. We've got to see how he's having the injections. He's having the work done. He's working tirelessly. Team are doing great stuff with him. We've just got to wait and see.